Hey everyone, welcome to day two of the Diabetes Reboot Challenge. Um, I've been getting great messages from you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me informed. So uh, just a little step that we are taking every day. You know the deal, leave me a comment and I'll answer it live. So yesterday we talked about the one thing that you can do that will make all the difference and that was hunting the carbs. If you have high sugars, the only way to have high sugars is if you're eating carbohydrates that get broken down into sugars. Um, so of the foods you eat, there's three macronutrients. So we often don't think in macros, that's usually for weightlifters, but you're familiar with micronutrients, that is your vitamins and things. So your macronutrients are protein, fat, and carbohydrates. So protein is used for repair. It's used for building. Um, so protein is used for uh, primarily repairing your muscles and repairing uh, your cell walls and and uh, you know renewing cells and all of that kind of thing. Um, fat is just that fat is essential. It's part of a lot of our membranes in our cells and it's used for the body for building as well. But it's used as a, a long term storage as well. Um, so both protein and fat don't have a huge impact on your blood sugars. Um, and I'll come back to protein in a bit. Um, and then you have carbohydrates. Now, carbohydrates traditionally, hey, Yolona, um, ah, it's difficult to get here. Okay, thank you for that. Hey, Sue. Um, so, um, and then you have carbohydrates. Now, carbohydrates, when you eat them, they're broken down um, by the body into glucose, aka blood sugar. Now, it doesn't matter how high quality the carbohydrates you eat are. It doesn't matter if the, the finest oats are harvested off the uh, slopes of the Himalayas. They will still be converted to sugar. So all carbohydrates equal sugar. It doesn't matter what they are. You've got to realize as well that carbohydrates play a much bigger role in our diet than they ever did historically. So a lot of the foods that we eat uh, frequently that form a big part of our diet were never a traditional part of our diet. Um, so sugar, for example, was not a traditional part of our diet in its fruit form or natural form, sugar cane, um, before it's processed. Uh, if you ate it in sugarcane form, you wouldn't end up with a problem, but because we've purified it and uh, and put it through these uh, quite extensive chemical processes, it doesn't bear any resemblance to what it once did. So pure carbohydrates would be very rare in our diet, and some people just are less equipped to deal with them than others, and there is a genetic component to this. Um, hey, Tom, oh, it's raining, I know. Um, oh, okay, fine. Thank you, Lorna. Lorna was just letting me know that it doesn't show that I'm live until 30 seconds or so into my feed. So that's all right. I'll just have to start a little bit earlier tomorrow, Lorna, so that I don't confuse people and make them wonder where I am. Okay, so the um, issue that we have with diabetes and why it's such a big issue now is twofold. One is that our diet has changed. We are eating uh, foods that would traditionally never have been a big part of our diet. And the other one that you've got going on is genetics. So um, you may know people, and I've definitely looked after people like this in my nursing career, that um, had big health issues um, they were uh, very overweight, um, super morbidly obese is what they would be described as in medical terms. They had all sorts of things wrong with them, but they were not diabetic. Equally, I've looked after people that you regard as healthy weight. Uh, Michael Mosley, actually, a UK GP who lives just down the road, um, coined this, or I don't know if he coined this term, but he made this term popular, which is toffee, T-O-F. I, which is thin on the outside, fat on the inside. So that is people, and it's quite common amongst the Asian community, that they will be what is deemed healthy weight, um, but be type 2 diabetic, because they have a higher genetic predisposition. So if you are sitting there and watching this and you're overweight, woohoo! <laughs> people always laugh when I do that, but actually if you're overweight and you're type 2 diabetic, it means you've got lots of room for manoeuvre. It means that um, 
the issue will go with the weight. And I want to be clear when I say this, and I said this yesterday, and if you haven't watched day one, watch day one, is that if you're overweight, it is not your fault. It is not a choice. It is not overeating. It is not lack of willpower. It is a metabolic disease. It's part of it. Uh, so the same thing. So the great thing is that it means you can turn it around. So the question I get asked a lot now is, okay, so you've told me about carbohydrates. What am I going to eat now? And the biggest question I actually get is, what? No bread? Um, hey, Michael, great to have you here. Uh, so the thing is, um, depending on where you are in the world, there will be options. All right. Um, where the money flows is where products appear. So um, there are lower carb breads out there. You can go on Amazon, um, Trade Me, uh, eBay, wherever you are, and there will be products. Most of the supermarkets now stock lower carb products. Please be careful, though, because one of the traps you can fall into is there's a lot of products marketed as high protein. Um, and actually, in a lot of countries around the world, there is no... Um, guide for what high protein is it's just a marketing term so please no matter what it markets itself as please just read the label all we're looking for is carbohydrate content it doesn't matter what the label says so the first thing is carbohydrate content the second thing is how much has this product been messed with do you recognize the ingredients on the label if it's talking about um, E245 and this preservative and that weird fiber ingredient, then you probably don't want that making up too big a part of your diet. We want to get you to foods that are just normal, natural foods. So most of your shopping is going to be done on the outer aisles of the supermarket. So that is the, um, the chiller aisles. Uh, so that is uh, your meat, your dairy products, your fats and oils. Some of them will be there. Your vegetables, all of that kind of thing. Absolutely, tins and things are fine. Um, but one of the things that accidentally happens when you reduce carbohydrates is that you're reducing processed foods in your diet. And that has a knock-on effect. And as we go through the 30 days, I'll talk about the little parts of that equation. Um, but in this week, and all we're trying to do is um, hunt those carbs, is get those carbs down. Now, what I will be talking about, and I'll talk about tomorrow, is the reaction that your body can have as you reduce the carbohydrates down and what to do about it. And the other thing I want to be really clear about now is this is not about deprivation, right? It's not the answer. All of, so many of you I've spoken to have counter calories, have uh, been on multiple diets and maybe tried juicing. And do you remember the cabbage soup diet and all of those kind of things? They're not sustainable for the long term. Deprivation is not going to help. So circling back to what you can eat now. So choose your favorite foods that just happen to be low carb. So for me in my life, that's raspberries and strawberries and cream and salmon and prawns and bacon and eggs. Um, you know, all of those kind of things. There are a wealth of recipes out there. So if you have a favorite dish that you love to eat, just put in macaroni cheese, low carb, or macaroni cheese keto, which is K-E-T-O. And on my Facebook group, there are loads of recipes there um, that have been tried and tested by you guys, um, sweet and savory. So um, search for whatever it is you want, crackers, bread, um, I do, you know, mashed potato, low carb, keto. Yeah, but you're not going to find potatoes, but there will be alternatives. There's some delicious alternatives that you can make where you don't really notice, you don't feel like you're missing out. So keto is another version of the low carb diet. Um, says uh, is short for ketogenic, which is just a fancy way of saying fat burning. It's saying that you're forcing your body into fat burning. So by reducing carbohydrates, we're reducing your insulin levels. Remember, you don't just have high sugars, you have high insulin. Um, and your insulin blocks fat burning. 
So you're increasing your body's ability to use the fat you've got stored. And as we go through this, I'll explain why that matters. Um, but I want to be really clear that all we're doing is helping your body get back into balance. It's been fighting to stay in balance for years, and now we're going to get out of its way. We're going to give it what it needs, and it can sort itself out. It will happen quite quickly in the initial stages. So I've had people that have had sugars down into normal levels within seven days. 30 days is easy, um, but it depends on the choices you make. I can't do it for you. You, know, you haven't been given the right information in the past. I'm giving you the right information now. It's up to you what you do with it. Um, and remember, we are not looking for perfect. Um, we are all here to support each other on this journey. So this is not about being brave and about um, getting it right all the time and telling yourself off if you make a mistake. It's about being human and we're doing enough. All you want is the result. So I don't care if you take two steps back as long as we're working on getting you three steps forwards. It's just about the direction over time. Small steps equal massive change. So that's all you have to do is just enough to get you moving forwards. Okay, hi Gita, how you doing? Hey, Deb. Oh, Deb's saying cauliflower mash. Cauliflower mash is amazing. Um, absolutely delicious. So we're talking about potatoes. Well, cauliflower, you wouldn't believe. And even if you hate cauliflower, it's a fantastic substitute for um, potato, for rice, uh, for mashed potato. I like to do it either steam it or um, put it in the microwave so it's not too watery. And then you blend it. Um, and add cheese and butter and cream without feeling guilty and it's delicious it's this amazing stuff Lorna's saying celeriac mash which is absolutely delicious as well celeriac makes great chips depending on where you are in the world it's celeriac or celery root um, absolutely amazing um, there's lots of delicious things out there um, just so we're going to cut through all the noise just check the carb levels of what you're eating. That's all you need to do. So, for example, sweet potatoes actually have more potatoes than more potatoes, more carbs than normal potatoes. So all you're doing is carbs. That's all to forget about everything else. We're just doing carbs. So if you like steak and chips, you're going to have steak without the chips, but with loads of mushrooms, with garlic butter, with hollandaise sauce, with uh, all the trimmings and with, um, you can do a uh, roast celeriac and pumpkin is great. Um, I love roast pumpkin. And um, in the UK, we have a lot of butternut squash, but pumpkin has around half the carbohydrates of butternut squash. So I just want you just to kind of get into the swing of things of kind of knowing how many carbs are in things. Now, Google is great. You can just put how many carbs in a potato, how many carbs in celeriac, how many carbs, and it will just tell you straight away. You don't need any big apps or anything else like that. It's very, very straightforward. Um, the other thing I want you to be preparing for if you're dropping down your carbohydrates, I wanna make sure you're enjoying your salt. So, and I'll talk about that um, tomorrow. I want to talk about, we're going to talk about electrolyte balance because what will happen is you'll, as your insulin levels drop, you'll get rid of retained fluid. Um, and uh, so a lot of you will have experienced you do a diet and please, this is not a diet. This is not restriction. Um, and you find that, um, you know, you're going, you're flushing lots of water, right? You're going to the loo loads. Um, I'll talk about why that happens. Um, and I'll talk about what can happen as a side effect of that. Nothing bad, but I'm going to tell you salt is on the menu. Like I said, butter was on the menu. Um, don't hold back on the salt. We've been told weird things about salt. Uh, I guess another thing that's not true. Uh, it's funny how we have kind of all of these. They turn out to be kind of urban myths, but actually become entrenched, uh, entrenched in our medical fraternity and become this fat um when actual fact the science doesn't back it up um there's quite a lot of those hiding in plain sight that you'll be told every time you go to the doctor hey ho um they just don't have time the doctors have time to prescribe they don't have time to treat um okay my lovely people so what we're doing is um still we're on that carb hunt 
And I want you to think about the foods that you really enjoy. Um, go online, ask Google, what can I have instead of? So bread's quite an easy one. There are commercially available low-carb breads um, that you can use. Um, that, and there's lots of products kind of coming through the pipeline now because of demand. Uh, and yeah, Derek says, I'm making them hungry. Derek, brilliant to have you with us. That's amazing. I'm sending you lots of hugs because I know you've been working your backside off and you've had a lot of stuff to contend with. So yeah, so don't be, uh, you know, it's the carbs that are the problem. Just, we're just going to hunt for those. So become an expert in you. Figure out the things that you like and what you can have as an alternative. So I do not want you controlling portions. I do not want you counting calories. I do not want you to be hungry. I do not, at this stage, want you skipping meals. I want you to eat delicious food that just happens to be low carb. And that is it. There is no limit on the amount of eggs you can make. I've got my 15-year-old son making stuffed eggs or deviled eggs where you're on, wherever you are in the world. That's what they're called. They're very 80s and very nice. Um, so nuts and uh, all the stuff that you thought was off limits. You know, go to the um, delicatessen counter and get salami and, and, you know, stuffed peppers and all the stuff that you like that you thought was kind of bad. Um, so... You set yourself free. Now, initially, you may find that it's slightly more expensive, but I can tell you, and actually there's been studies done with this, I know from all of you guys, that actually over time, the quality of what you buy improves and the amount that you spend decreases. Okay? So on that note, I'm going to see you tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to be touching on salt and electrolytes. And we're going to be covering, uh, starting to get into what's actually happening with your body as you withdraw from carbohydrates um, and what's going to happen with cravings and how do you deal with that. Okay, my amazing people, you are all legends. Fantastic to have you with me. I'm going to be watching you and I'm here to answer your questions and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. <laughs>